Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about golden rules. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are your golden rules for programming in JavaScript? Well, these rules are, like, I can't really think of all of them at the top of my head because I've accumulated, like, I've worked with JavaScript for a while now and you kind of just get the sensation for how to do things and when you get to that level of uh, w when you're when you sort of figure out what's gonna work and what's not gonna work it's sort of like a, it's almost like sixth sense it's hard to just f to formulate all of the things you just kind of know it's it's like as I said it's like a sixth sense you know what's gonna work but I'll try my best to give you a few of the rules that I usually try to follow so the first rule that I try to follow is if you're building anything that is bigger than a basic, very basic, small little application with some ad hoc code or a small script or something like that, use TypeScript. Anything that is bigger than that, any server, like whatever you're doing, just use TypeScript immediately off the bat. The once you, I mean, it, it is a little bit of a change to your work environment and your workflow, but it is such a it's such a low cost thing for you to to um, transition into, and it will remove like almost every single bug that like the most common bugs that you will have, which is the classic cannot call or cannot find a thing of undefined. And that is like 99.999% of all the problems you're ever going to have in JavaScript are related to the type system. I promise you that much. There are other issues, of course, that you're going to find as well. But this like, TypeScript is, it is such a godsend to use when you're dealing with anything that is a little bit more sophisticated than the, the most basic thing that you can imagine. So that's going to be a rule number one. Use TypeScript as a rule for anything that is semi-serious. Rule number two is to pass in global context. Don't assume your running by a runtime environment. Never assume your runtime environment. I have, to this day, had more requests from developers in uh, who's worked with me to help get help with things like Webpack and like the different runtime environments where they use like they use Babel to polyfill in um, features that are not supported or they uh, use um, like the, the window object they, but that's not available in like their test runner and so forth like all of these things because that's that's the thing guys the one of the benefits of JavaScript is that it's all text which means that it can run in many many different runtime environments and that is exactly what we do we have many different con execution contexts for the code that you are writing and if you don't understand which environment has what feature and which environment will have all of them you should not use them it's a very dangerous thing because and this is I think the most confusing confusing part for the vast majority of people who are going to getting into JavaScript today, the whole ecosystem around bundling and transpiling from one thing to another and so forth, all of this stuff is extremely confusing for the most, even for senior developers, they come to me and try to figure out or just how does Webpack work? And I go, well, their loaders and so forth and I kind of have to walk you through with them and then they come immediately afterward and say well I was trying to run my yes test here but that didn't work why is that and I go because you're not in the browser you're running your code but the browser you have no window object here you have to prove you have to polyfill that in and so what I like to have as a rule is that whenever I work I don't like I don't reference things directly in that fashion. You, if you've seen any of my JavaScript videos in Node and so forth about testing, you will see that I follow a practice where I pass in into my code, like at the entry point or into a function, whatever I'm doing, I always pass in the global context, the thing that I'm going to depend on, the thing I know is not going to be part of every single thing. So an example would be the window object. That's a very easy one. In some cases, if I am 100% sure that the window object will always be there under all circumstances, then I know for a fact, then I know that in a test runner like Mocha or Jest or whatever you're using, I can 
create a JS DOM representation. Like I can create a fake window object and just put it there if I really want to. But as a rule, I always pass in a reference to the window object. The reason why I want to do that is because if I do that I can control what I put in. So if I'm going to run my code in my test runner, I just pass in an empty object or like an object, a, sta a fake object that just holds the properties that I'm looking for. And in the browser it's going to work immediately because then I actually have the window object. And in my transpiler or whatever it's the same sort of thing, right? It's uh, I've seen it a hundred times before when different developers are trying to use like node specific features like uh, like the file system module and then they try to send that code to the client and it blows up because the browser doesn't have a file system module and th so that's my general room like just pass in the the feature and like avoid like the plague if at all possible the Babel transpile transpilation features that are not part of the standard a, don't use non-standard features because it's it is just it's it's just 99% of the time it's just syntactic sugar that you can express in some other way and it's just not worth it and those are I think the two main ones if I have more rules I would say that a third rule would be to treat JavaScript as a uh, as, as a functional ish language and the data that you're do, working with as immutable by default. You don't have to make everything completely immutable, but what I'm saying is that don't try, try to really think, try to really leverage the more functional patterns, such as using, like, pass in functions, use lambda function, functions, and so forth. Trying to be a strict object oriented programmer in JavaScript is not a good experience. It's better now with the class systems and so forth. But object oriented programming in its purest form is, re and with TypeScript, it does also get a little bit better. Java, you have to understand that like, JavaScript is not Java. Don't try to treat it like Java. Try to treat it as, as its own beast. And to get the most out of JavaScript, I really do believe that you have to have a bit of a functional gene and a bit of an object-oriented gene in some cases. And then my last rule, which I think is my, it's probably my favorite, uh, is to treat your client-side code in JavaScript as your server code. And what I mean by that is basically that one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of JavaScript developers make is that they treat the code that is coming from the server as some type of holy entity that just is to be passed in into the logic of your front-end code and then you just figure out how how all of this works. You have this big blob of data and you need to like just reference it all left and right in order to get the shape that you want. What I argue to you is that you should not do that. You should do what the server does. If you post the data to a server, the server has an expected format. When you post a form or you send an Ajax call, there's always an expectation. There's a model. You have decided that, okay, the thing that I'm going to get in is in this shape. And then you put the requirement on the server to send you that, that thing. That's the best thing, because then you're saving bandwidth. There's tons of applications that are just sending like raw data from the database directly to the client, and then the client takes care of all the other stuff, like formatting the data. And that's just stupid, because you're sending more data than you need. If you can't get the server people or the backend developers to agree to that, and they, that and they, because their job is, of course, easier if they don't have to format the data, then you do the formatting as early as possible at the highest peak. In other words, in your Axios lab library or your fetch function or whatever you're using, when the data literally comes back from the, from the network call, you map that into a shape, like an incoming model, that is in line with what you want in the rest of the, of the application. Because that way, you can design your, your front-end code in, that's going to run in the browser from the client's perspective. And that is perfect, because then you can actually just express all the things that you want, and then morph the data that is coming from the, uh, from the server into that shape, instead of letting that data control how your, your front-end logic should look. So what I want you to take away from this is that my four rules, like I have tons more, is number one, use TypeScript for anything that is semi-advanced. It will save you so much headache and so many problems with bugs and so forth. Number two is uh, pass in global environmental stuff. Like you don't assume you're a runtime environment. JavaScript runs in many environments. It's gonna run 
uh, you can have if you're doing node full stack node development you're gonna have code that is gonna run on the server and it might run on the browser and it might run in your test runner there's tons of these different and like you might bundle it that's another situation there's so many execution contexts so make sure that you don't assume that you're going to have access to global variables and global parameters and so forth pass them in as a rule and avoid non-standard features like the fucking plague third Try to have a more functional approach when you're dealing with JavaScript. Functional programming with a bit of object-oriented programming is the way I've found it to be most effective. Use functional concepts like uh, uh, higher order functions and so forth. That's very, very useful. And try to treat things as immutable per default. Do not go to the extreme just as a good rule of thumb. Lastly, treat your client code as your server code. Don't just take whatever the server is sending you. Create a model that you expect from the server and if the server can shape that data for you that's the best thing but if it can't map that raw data into the model that you want in order to keep your client-side logic as clean as possible. Have a great day!